All right, here we go. Part two. Trades that people didn't know about that were taking place. That's right. Let's talk about Kobe becoming a Detroit Piston. Oh, yeah. Now, a lot of people didn't find out about this until Kobe mentioned it when he was on a tele television show, but Bill knew. Bill Simmons knew. Um, it's a lot of people who knew and paid attention during that time. There were a lot of situations going on in 2007. But we got to take you to the steps of what got you there. What? How did this come about? Because a lot of people don't realize that this was an approved trade. The NBA approved it. Everybody was on board with this trade. Except for one person. And that was Kobe Bryant. But let's show you how we got there. Now, the Los Angeles Lakers... The year they got rid of Shaq and Phil Jackson, it was like Kobe cleaned house. Kobe got rid of Phil and Shaq. That was the talk. Right? They did that, but that was the Lakers making a decision that we're going to stick with Kobe. He's the younger guy. We're building the team around him. Now, Kobe was hot as a firecracker at the time, you know, because... The main problem at this stage was the fact that Kobe had the Colorado situation. So bringing him to the playoffs and giving him that kind of exposure, the NBA kind of wanted that to fade away. So that first season, they had Rudy Tomjanovich in there, and Rudy just couldn't deal with a team like this and with Kobe and everything. It just wasn't working out. Rudy just retired, went back into retirement, and it's like, I'm done coaching. So a guy named Frank Hamlin took over the team. And Frank Hamlin just coached the team, and the team was awful. I mean, they were they didn't make the playoffs that year. The Lakers was just completely awful. Um, they had a bunch of guys that could barely play basketball on the team. Uh, Chris Mim was on there, and him and Kobe definitely didn't get along. <laughs> and he that means somebody had to go, and it was Chris Mim. <laughs> so the very next season, they were better. They brought Phil Jackson back. Phil's back. So they convinced Phil Jackson to come back. So Phil and Kobe, they had to have a little one-on-one -on -one conversation. Because Phil basically dogged Kobe in his book, saying he's uncoachable and all these different things, and made people feel a certain way about Kobe Bryant. Now, Kobe and Phil had a conversation, and they worked things out, and things were a lot better at that time between the two. Now, the Lakers were in danger of not making the playoffs. And Kobe just start going on a tear where he just literally tore the league apart. And once he was doing this and putting up 60s every other night, it's like, are you kidding me? This dude is incredible. He can't be stopped. So they were 45 and 37 is where they finished. They were third in the Pacific. But what more importantly is they built up a chemistry this year and they went to the went to the playoffs and then it comes down to the game seven in this series and when they play in this series it was the weirdest series ever because in the game seven matchup that they had because they went up 3-1 on Phoenix they had Phoenix the Lakers had them they defense was defensively was on point from game two on they began to start to take an advantage now
they went into, I want to say, after getting blown out that last game, when they went into the championship game, which was for me, um, that game seven, Kobe had 50 at a loss in game six. And when he came to game seven, you know, they were just like, we're not going to win playing that way, Kobe. You can't do this and that. You got to buy into what I'm saying. So, Kobe was like, all right, well, let's go out and see what happens. They competed. They played. And once they got to a certain point, it was clear what the problem was. Kobe played ball. He had like 24. He wasn't as aggressive. He only took 16 shots. He spread the ball around. He played the game. Phil wanted them to play. Wanted Kobe to play. Kobe shot the ball one time in the fourth quarter. One time. That was it. <laughs> like, I mean, really, he was not trying to gun at all. He played within the team, and they lost. 121 to 90. He showed Phil, okay, you wanted me to play your way? I played your way. We lost. That what you want? That's what you want, right? To play your way. We played your way, and we lost the same same way. They just didn't have the personnel. Now, I know that and you know that, but Phil wants to make it like we gotta buy in. Next year, they're second in the Pacific. Things are going well. Except they don't get a trade that they were supposed to get in this season to get help. Kobe is like, why in the world do we have these guys on the team? You know, they surrounded him with Smush Parker is still on the team. And Kobe's like, I, I can't deal with this. This team we got is, is garbage. It's really garbage. It's uh, some players here that can play, but we should have made a push and we should have had some players on this team that can get us to the next level. Phoenix added some more athleticism on the team. And it's like, wow, they keep making moves. Why we're not making moves? not making sense so throughout this playoffs and before going into the playoffs Phil and Kobe have been arguing yelling back and forth to Phil is like why did I even come back Phil even thought about quitting and Kobe was like you should <laughs> it was that type of like arguing to where Mitch had to come in here and say no none of this okay we got to go and get this out. Kobe played like he was playing his heart out that series. It just, they weren't good enough. So they lost in five games. The Lakers won one game only in that series. But none of the games were really close. Phoenix was just that much better than them. And this was a tough pill for Kobe to swallow because he feels like the organization is just happy we make the play we making the playoffs. And I'm not and they don't want to vie for championships. That's not I'm not for that. The Lakers is cool. They just want to be competitive. They want to sell out, be competitive. They've won enough championships. Kobe's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not that I'm not built like that. I'm not 
you're not finna use me to sell the tickets <laughs> for people to come here to see Kobe Bryant play and me not compete to win championships. That's not why I'm here. And if this is your goal, then we can get a trade going right now. You can get rid of me. We can go. I can leave. So they was like, what? So at the end of the season, Kobe's fed up. He wants out. The, the team has not made an effort to say they want to try to win championships. And they told him, like, they don't really care if they win championships. Kobe wants out. So Dr. Buss tried to talk to him. Um, that didn't work. And once he heard Dr. Buss's direction, you know, like, you know, he can, you know, they, they got like 16, 15 championships. What would one more mean? You know, like, well, what would one more mean? We got like 13 championships. You know, we we won our chips right now. You know, now it's to enjoy the fruits of the labor. You know, you're going to be in the hall of one of the Lakers greats. You will not be forgetting, forgotten about. You know, it's not like playing for any other team. You play for the Lakers. You know, you're, it's important. So they're selling Kobe on this. Like, you don't want to be traded. Kobe's like, no, trade me. <laughs> I want to go somewhere. Now, what people didn't know was Kobe's list of teams. See, Kobe Bryant wanted to um, have a list. He was the only player with a no-trade clause in his contract. That's right. And because he had that no-trade clause in his contract, he was put in a different type of situation. The team had to abide by the rules. And he was the only one in 2004 that got that put in his contract. So at that time, Kobe was the one that could demand where he goes, when he goes, and how he goes. <laughs> and the team he selected to go to play for were the Chicago Bulls. That was his number one choice. Now, the Chicago Bulls at that time, they were like not one of the best teams in the league. They had some pieces on their team, but they weren't like one of the best teams in the league. Kobe wanted to go there. And his other choice was the Los Angeles Clippers. A lot of people didn't know that. The Los Angeles Clippers. Now, you said, well, why would he go play for those teams? One, Chicago, because that's the home of Jordan. <laughs> he stayed in contact with Mike and everybody else that once this was done, you know, and he wanted to go play for the Clippers, Jerry West told you how he came by and talked Kobe out of going to the Clippers. See, a lot of you didn't know that. The Detroit Pistons, Joe Dumars, had a situation appear that came out of nowhere. Because at that time, Ben Wallace isn't, isn't with the team. They didn't pay Ben Wallace that money that he wanted. He went to the Chicago Bulls to get that money. So while he's in Chicago, and they got... Lou Aldang, and they just got bounced out in the second round of the playoffs. They had Kurt Heinrich, and they basically, you know, they had a decent team. And a lot of people felt like the Bulls were on their way. I think they had Ben Gordon at the time. Uh, ben Gordon was, was phenomenal for the Bulls. To be a small two-guard, he did a lot of great things 
for them while he was with the Bulls. Now, while he was there, Kobe is watching this. And Kobe sees what the Bulls have in play. Like they're like one superstar away. And that superstar ended up being Derrick Rose down the road. But they were one star away. And he knew that me in that lineup, with those pieces, with me playing with Ben Wallace, we can go to a championship. We'll dominate the East. We'll, go, we'll walk right through the East. Now, here was the problem. The Lakers would have to give up so they would have to give up so much just to get Kobe. It ain't gonna be worth it for him to go to Chicago. But this is what the problem kicked in at. Detroit, the Pistons are in a crisis mode because after they lost to go to them, everybody felt they should have beat Cleveland and LeBron. There was no way they should have lost that. Even when McDice got tossed, there's no way they should have lost that series. So once they lost, they were ready to make changes. Rip Hamilton was going to be gone. And the reason why Rip was going to be gone is not that the team didn't want Rip Hamilton. It was that they didn't want to pay Rip Hamilton <laughs> Rip Hamilton is a great, what they call a non-franchise player, just a role player. He was very great in his role, but he's a role player. And you don't want to pay a role player that kind of money. He already signed a 60 some million dollar contract. Now it's time he's up for renegotiation for his contract. So they'd rather trade him and get something for him so he can go get that money. So right now, they're at a crossroads. They're at a huge crossroads, and they're ready to make a deal. So Joe Dumars talked to Mitch Kupchak to, to hear, like, if this is true about Kobe Bryant, we're looking to acquire him. And they had a deal, and Mitch is thinking, this team just kicked our butts. And Rip Hamilton was a huge part of that. And that, a guy like that with our team, you know, Phil Jackson was ecstatic about this trade. They say we get a chance to get Rip Hamilton, a guy who can play off the ball, move around with the ball. We get Tayshawn Prince, a guy who was a non monster defender. And we getting two draft picks from the Pistons. Let's, this is it. So Jerry Buss and Mitch called Kobe and told Kobe, if you really want to go, we got a deal for you on the table. He said, what, what's, what's the deal? He said, you'll go to the Detroit Pistons. And, you know, for Rip Hamilton, Tayshaun Prince, uh, another player named uh, Amir somebody and two draft picks. And said, we wanted you to stay a Laker, but, you know, Kobe said, no, 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 no. I told you. Only teams I would go to is the Clippers or the Bulls. That's it. Those are the two teams I want to go to. So, they were like, oh, all right. Fine. So they go into this trying to make the deal go down, and they did not want Kobe to go to the Clippers. If Kobe was going to leave L.A., they did not want to see Kobe three times a year <laughs> and have him basically in the same building. You know, it's like, wait a minute. We are in the same building. You know, this is not going to be good for us. We, we can't have Kobe here. That's not gonna. That's not gonna go well. It's not gonna go over well. So, this, but this is what Kobe wants. You know. So for him, this is ideal.
So, I mean, Dr. Jerry West was called in to have a conversation with Kobe about playing with, you know, the owner of the Clippers. You know, the, he's not a nice man, you know. So now we all know what that understood, and, you know, you knew what happened there. But the Chicago Bulls deal, You know, that was a deal that was more attractive to him because of who was there. But when they were trading him for all the the Lakers strategically asked for all of these players because they knew the only way we can get Kobe to stay is to basically ruin the trade and say, well, look, this is it. <laughs> you know, like you want to get out of here. They got to give us all these players for you. So... They're not going to have anything. You know what I'm saying? So if they don't have anything, oh well. But you want to go, we'll 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 make the deal go. So it's, it's up to you to void the trade. I mean to waive your no trade clause and then it's done. Kobe was in a Kobe was in a very difficult position. To say the least. So he had to he had to stay. There was nothing they could do. He said, Kobe, tell us what you want. We want you to stay here. We want you to remain a Laker. But tell us what you need to go forward. Now, the Pistons got the news that the trade was dead. So because of that, they ended up signing Rip to a new contract, paid him the money, but that meant somebody else had to go. That somebody that had to go <laughs> ended up being yours truly, Chauncey Billups. The MVP of the NBA Finals that brought the championship home, they made a trade for who? Allen Iverson. So they brought Allen Iverson in to play with Rip. So, you know, it's... It was... Uh, Fitting that Rip stay with the Pistons longer, you know. You know, because he did do a lot there, but they couldn't keep both of them there. So, trading, signing Rip to a, an extension for, what, $34 million, And... With his first two years guaranteed. And by that, that was like Chauncey had to go. And they sent him back home to Denver because that's where he's from. So they said, well, this is works out because Chauncey's from Denver. Chauncey didn't want to go. <laughs> Chauncey like, I ain't trying to go to Denver. I, just because I'm from that didn't mean I want to be traded. <laughs> but it was... Hey, it was what they had to do at the time. The Pistons was losing money, and they need to get some names in there. So you bring Allen Iverson in, you know, that's Allen Iverson. So they had to have some names, you know, bring some people in, even though they're going to the playoffs. You got to get that name recognition. So hope you guys are following this because this was this was real back in the day. This was. This is like trades that were coming up. I know Amir Johnson, like, what? I was involved? I was like, yep. <laughs> so, these are some amazing situations. Now, you might say, well, the Clippers? It's like, yeah, the Clippers, man. <laughs> 
You know, people didn't really pay attention to the Clippers at that time. But why would Kobe want to go there? Well, he's, he doesn't have to move. <laughs> he's playing right in the same building. Different owner. And this is not one of the top teams. Detroit was one. Of, they were like one player away from going to the finals. If they would have had Chauncey Billups, Kobe Bryant on their team, uh, they wouldn't have had Tayshaun Prince. Would that team have been able to get to the NBA Finals? That year, they would have had to go up against the bad boy, not the bad boy Pistons, but the Boston Celtics. That would have been a tall task, but he would have had enough physical weapons to get that done. My thing is, what would the Clippers been able to give up to get them? Because they had Smush Parker on the team that year. So I don't think uh, Kobe would have, they Smush would have had to go. But they had Tim Thomas. You had Sam Cassell, Elton Brand, uh Brevin Knight, Corey McGetty, um, Catino Mobley, who was young. You know, it was a bunch of players that, I mean, this team to me, it's like, what were you thinking? <laughs> Only thing I was thinking is that Kobe want to go there and he don't have to change anything. He's just on another team. But you were in the worser boat with the Clippers. So, anyhow, that was that. Don't forget to subscribe to the page and the Cash App is Carcino. Thank you guys. I love you guys for all the support. The Patreon is popping right now. We're talking about Michael Jordan and Kevin Hart. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. But um, I will be chatting with y'all on the Patreon tomorrow. So, definitely pay attention to that. And uh, we are out. Deuces.